Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, please welcome your president, Debbie Davio. Veuillez accueillir votre présidente, Madame Debbie Davio. Friends, colleagues, welcome to our 98th annual general meeting. Our theme this year is best in the world, and with good reason. Earlier this year, an international study concluded that Canadians have the most effective public service in the world. I think we have one of the most effective unions too, don't you? <laughs> Consider just three things we've accomplished in the past year. Together, we negotiated provisions to protect against the muzzling of scientists. Together, we secured collective agreement language to reduce the federal government's over-reliance on outsourcing. And together, we saved the federal sick leave system and created an opportunity for genuine negotiations on meaningful improvements. But that's not all. The Yukon Hospital Corporation members secured their first negotiated agreement. The New Brunswick Crown prosecutors are no longer the lowest paid prosecutors in the country, and members of the University of Ottawa Information Technology Professionals recently reached an agreement in principle with their employer, avoiding thus a strike. We also scored victories outside of the bargaining process. Our long-standing call for more investments in the Canada Revenue Agency was heard in the federal budget. We've made our voices heard in opposition to Bill C-27 and its threat to define benefit pensions, one of the vital safeguards of middle-class incomes for retired workers. A lot of these efforts and achievements are vital not just only to our members, but as Alex Himmelfarb has said, to the common good. Our members, like most Canadians, don't want us bogged down in small, inward-looking struggles. They want and need us to fight the bigger battles that benefit them and everyone. The work we have done advocating public interest bargaining, fashioning common demands, and building solidarity amongst our groups has served our members and Canadians very well. More science and evidence-based public policy benefit everyone. So does a tax system that can tackle offshore tax havens. So does a government that hires full-time, permanent, unionized professionals. The model of collective action represented by our Strategic Bargaining Committee, therefore, needs to continue. It needs to continue so that we can fight more effectively for our members on issues such as real job security, better sick leave, stronger pensions, and set a path that others in the country can also follow. This is a message I will continue to champion over the next years as president of the Institute and my newly elected role as VP of the Executive Committee of the Canadian Labour Congress. I'm very proud of what we've accomplished over the past year. I'm equally proud of what our members do every day for Canadians. And I know that others deserve to know and celebrate it too. We launched this year the first of a new publication, Better Together, which showcases our members, the variety of work that they do, and the value that they bring to Canadians. We've given a copy to every MP. We've also produced a set of accompanying videos, and you'll see some of these, as you did just before, uh, on the screens at different points throughout the AGM. And we've launched an ad campaign in bus shelters, office buildings, and online. But celebrating our title as the best public service in the world isn't enough. We have work to do together to keep our number one status. 
The Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives reported last year that the federal government is the smallest it's been since before the Second World War. That needs to change if we're to meet the challenges of the future. So we've continued to work hard and convinced the federal government to invest more in Canada's public service. In our pre-budget consultation submission to the Federal Finance Committee, we called on government to do three things. To restore Canada's public science capacity. To reduce over-reliance on outsourcing of government services. And to ensure the integrity of our tax system. Like most things worth doing, these require money. But most of all, they require us to convince politicians. So late last month, we took that message directly to MPs on the Hill. I know we are going to be rocking and rolling on the Hill tomorrow. Hi, I'm Debbie Davio. I'm president of the Professional Institute of the Public Service of Canada. This is a big day for us, a political action day. We're making sure our voices are heard in Parliament. There are three key messages we're bringing with us. One, end over-reliance on outsourcing. Outsourcing costs the government money, jobs, accountability and productivity. Just look to the failure of the Phoenix pay system. Hi, my name is Stan Boudet and I'm the president of the CS Group. The federal government makes up one of the largest IT enterprises in the country. Why outsource work our own professionals should do. Hi, I'm Joanne Bouchard. I'm uh, currently the SH Group president for the Professional Institute of the Public Service of Canada. I'm a registered nurse. I work uh, for Health Canada, First Nations Inuit Health in northern Manitoba. In source first and reduce outsourcing to 2005 2006 levels by 2019 2020. Two, restore public science and basic research. It's time to rebuild Canada's public science capacity. I'm Wahid Khan. I'm the president of the National Consultation Team at Environment and Climate Change Canada. I work in the National Capital Region. Hire more scientists and researchers to replace the 1,500 federal scientists lost prior to 2015. Invest in government scientific capacity. Tax fairness. Canadians' faith in the fairness and impartiality of the tax system will be stronger once offshore tax havens and large corporate tax evaders are held to account. Hello et bonjour. My name is Marvin McGanna. I am IT Zone President for PIPS for the uh, Computer Sciences in the Pacific Region, and I also work as an infrastructure support analyst for Canada Revenue Agency. A commitment of $400 million annually to enhance the CRA's ability to target tax haven abuse, corporate tax avoidance and evasion. Investments in training and technology to keep pace with tax cheats. Of the Conservatives, because of tax cuts, my name is Mona Lisa Dumais. I am a, I'm a, a nurse for the CSE and I live in Quebec. Restore the integrity, scientific, and fiscal, and fiscal equality and outsourcing. Those are stakes very important for all our members and Canadians. And uh, the organization is looking forward to working together to better serve Canadians. I certainly appreciate the role of all of our scientists. We have the best and the brightest um, in, uh, of the public service uh, working, uh, working here in Canada. We uh, successfully met with over 30 members of parliament, uh, mostly today, a couple meetings yesterday. We truly appreciated the way we've been received and we hope that this is just the first of many meetings to help us uh, help Canadians to be all that they can be. So. We're out here changing people's minds and that's really important because we're fighting for the critical services that Canadians rely on. I love it when ministers pose for a photo holding our message. Uh, 
<laughs> there's no doubt that we've made a lot of progress on many fronts, but there's one particular issue which a lot more progress needs to be made. We all know the one. The best public service in the world deserves far better than the Phoenix payroll system. As of August the 8th, 156,035 federal employees, that's more than half of the public service, had opened a file about incorrect payment in Phoenix. And the problem has not gotten any better. Yesterday, the government informed employees by email that there are now over half a million outstanding transactions. Yay. Meanwhile, Contract costs with IBM have grown from 5.7 million in 2011 when IBM was hired to develop and implement Phoenix to 185 million in 2017. Of course, what the numbers don't tell us are the stories of stressed out employees, some of whom have gone months without any pay at all. All this that the last there were two grievances concerning the employer. This is the only recourse. Our only legal means of pressuring the government to repair the system and properly compensate all our members who have been harmed or impacted. We filed three more policy grievances this fall when the federal government failed to meet its obligation in implementing new collective agreements for members of the AV, RE, and SP groups. We are about to file two similar policy grievances for members similar to the ones of members of the CS and HSH group. And this is on top of have helped to help several thousand members to have, of which a lot of them were were settled. And we've written to the we've also managed to that the members should be reimbursed their expenses, legitimate expenses, and we have worked with the media so that they continue to draw the attention of the public on the problems, and we've uh, offered loans to employees who are the most seriously impacted. We've organized manifestations, and we've exercised pressure with success so that more be money be be given towards the fixing up of Phoenix a la fin juin. ...working group responsible for fixing Phoenix. I made a case for closer collaboration between the government and some of our CS group members in finding solutions. I still hope this will lead not only to the eventual Phoenix fixes, but also to, for a better appreciation of our members' professional contribution and a change in the government's outsourcing practices. But here's the thing, no one, I mean no one I know, likes Phoenix. I mean no one. Our members don't like it, we don't like it. Taxpayers don't like it, Rick Mercer doesn't like it. And clearly the Senate doesn't like it. I'm sure the ministerial working group set up to fix it doesn't like it much either. Clearly, so, why defend it? Phoenix doesn't work because it wasn't designed to work for an operation as large and complex and, let's face it, as subject to shifting ideological and economic pressures as the federal public service. That's not the fault of the public service, and it's certainly not the fault of collective bargaining. It's the fault of the people from the last government who wanted to cut payroll costs and hire for-profit contractors. And it's the fault of the current government for not seeing the error of the last government's ways soon enough to pull the plug. And it's the fault of blind faith, or dumb policy, in endlessly renewed and ever-expanding corporate contracts. About the only people who really like Phoenix are those who stand to profit from it. So why are we surprised? Earlier this month, we did a quick informal poll of our members and asked them, do you think Phoenix can be fixed? 87% said no. And no one should be surprised of that result. I'm certainly not. But 
That's why earlier this week, I put the challenge to the government to forget Phoenix, cut its losses, and invest in building a new system, one that's tested, one that's built for and built by and for public servants. It could be based on the same PeopleSoft program. It won't be cheap, and it won't be built overnight, but it will be cheaper, and it will be faster and more effective in the long run than forever patching a faulty system that was programmed to fail from the start. And perhaps most importantly, it will work. <laughs> In the meantime, our members need to be paid, and paid properly. And the only way that seems possible is for the government to spend the money needed to hire more staff now to assist members with their payroll problems. And that's why we're asking our members of consultation teams to meet with management in the workplace and issue one simple demand. Either hire more staff to assist our members or face more grievances. Until a new system that works can actually be built by our members, our only hope for a real solution to these ongoing problems is through hiring more staff or the threat of more grievances. Our stewards are critical to this initiative, so we've prepared a special Phoenix Grievance Toolkit that will be available to them online through their portal accounts starting this Monday, November 20th. These kits will guide stewards step-by-step step in ha helping members file more grievances when and where they're needed. We argued from the start that Phoenix's problems had their origin in an over-reliance on outsourcing and hope to fix Phoenix rests with federal IT professionals, not IBM. Any hope of having a system that works long, longer term also rests with a new system designed and implemented by federal IT professionals. And any hope of providing more immediate solutions rests with our efforts to pressure the government now to hire more staff or face more grievances. It doesn't need to be a story with an unhappy ending. We've seen what we can do when we work together. We've bargained successfully to prevent the muzzling of scientists, to reduce outsourcing and to save sick leave. We can apply the same concerted pressure to save our members from Phoenix. We have the skills and resources as union members, Canadians and public employees to make a difference in our members and others' lives. In fact, one of the most hopeful new tools that PIPS launched recently is the new website action.pips.ca, specifically for members looking to get more involved in PIPS. It features notices of special member events, activities, surveys, and other ways you can get involved in your union. You can watch video interviews with the members profiled in Better Together. You can also sign our online petition calling for the government to invest more in Canada's public service. You can also, and listen, this is very important, visit this website address today on your screen and email the ministerial working group um, to tell them it's time to build a pay system that works. As of this morning, we had 4,000 members send an email to ministers. That's the largest online mobilization of members we've organized yet. Member engagement in such actions is important because however effective we may be individually, our ultimate success as public service professionals is measured by what we can do together. Better together is no longer just a slogan. It's a promise, a measure of our collective success. As our accomplishments of the past year and the challenges before us demonstrate, we all have a stake in ensuring that we remain better together. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup.